Hey guys, welcome back to the Mullen Performance Audio Channel. I wanted to uh, make a video this morning. It's cold in my garage. Uh, you'll have to excuse the fact I got the heater on. I got my little bitty heater on. It is uh, about, what does this say? About 20, 24, 26, something like that in here. So, it's warmer than it is outside, though. When I woke up this morning, it was minus 8. So, um, I was watching Andy stream, uh, Andy stream last night, living loud with Andy, and I just fell asleep. I only had about three hours worth of sleep the night before, and I was watching the stream, and I really wanted to spend some time with you guys and talk and hang out, but, man, my old body just said, nope, and uh, I was out, so... Didn't sleep much better last night, but oh well. Uh, so, what I want to talk about today was, some of you know, uh, I have a 79 Chevy Malibu. And I haven't, uh, you know, I've been out of the audio game for a really long time anyway. And getting back into it, uh, I wanted to put the four, four American bass XFL 1244s in the car and it was the first time I had built a box in oh my gosh 20 plus years and I had built it kind of like normally how I would build boxes back in the day but the problem was with that car is that that car is airbagged so for the people that don't know I started building this car about 15 or 16 years ago and I wanted it to be the first at the time you know this was 16 year ago, 16 year ago, Sean. I want that car to be the first car, G body, to be laid out on 22s. Now, this was before I was back into stereo stuff and stuff like that. So, I started. Uh, I took that car, chopped off the the frame. So I totally blew the car apart from total body off frame laying on the frame table that I made cut it right behind the driver's door and started making I made my own back half now what I did you know I did this in the back of a shop with a 110 plug in the back dark kind of by myself and I would not build it the same way I built it that it's built now but it's a little late for that but I'm making do so I wanted to lay the car out the car has an 8.8 .8 out of a Ford Explorer. Um, it's got 22s on the back, 22 uh, by 10s on the back, with uh, 295, 30, 22s, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, the problem I was having with the car is that the way Malibus are shaped, they're kind of shaped like this. So when you try to put a square coming up into an angle, you start getting tire issues so you have to start tucking the tires closer and closer and closer to the inside of the car and now you're probably thinking what in the hell does this have to do with anything about car audio well when you lay a car out on airbags and you want that frame laying right on the ground you have to make room for that back axle you have to make room for all those, all those tires and everything, suspension parts, four link bars, all that stuff, you have to make room for that inside the car. Because now that stuff is all getting pressed up into the car. So I was like, you know what? It's just gonna be a two seater. We're just gonna have a back, no back seat. I didn't care. I'll throw a, like a 12 in there or something like that just to fill up the space. Well, that was before I got back into car audio. So, I had to build a box around all this crap in the back of the car. Now, I had to sheet metal it all back in. And I want to talk about why the box of my car sucks. And it sucks for what I did. And I'll eventually change it. Not right now. I'm playing around with it still a little bit. I got a couple ideas. But I'm going to tell you what the Band-Aid is that I'm going to do to help try to fix this. So, I got my whiteboard here. Now, my car, I call it Project Malicious. This is basically, I think, an easy way for me to explain why the box sucks 
and kind of what I'm gonna do. So, the back of the car is kind of shaped like this. If you were looking at the back of the car uh, from the side, this is kind of how the car is shaped. So this would be the back speaker deck of the car. I had to come down with sheet metal down this way, and then it comes down, it has a little ledge, and then this is where the passenger seat floorboard would be. So the transmission is right here, and then the drive shaft for the rear end when it's laid out, because the tire, now what I had problems with is the tire comes in here, the tire is so big, is that it basically touches the back speaker deck from the original car. Because that's the only thing left that I didn't cut out in the car because the tire is so big. When this car is laying flat out on the ground, that tire is so big, it is touching the speaker deck of the car. And then you got four link bars that run down this way and this way. So that's why I had to make room right here. So transmission uh, tunnel is right here. Transmission starts right here. Drive shaft comes up this way uh, into the pumpkin. That's what this piece is for right here. So I had to build a box basically all around this. So what I did, let's see if I can back here. So this is where the drive shaft would be if you're looking straight up the car. This is the tires, rear end goes across here. So when I built a box, I had to build a box that came in here, went over this hump. It had to come up this way. There's kind of a 45 degree angle and then it comes up above the line of the back speaker deck. So my box actually comes up to here. Well then, the wheel wells right here, I had to go around them. The box comes down here. It does a little jog. So the box is basically built like this in the car. So that's how the box is built. So it had to go around all this crap. So I had to have a flat piece here, flat piece here. There's a 45 here. There's kind of a 45 here. There's this little flat piece up here that I had to go. It's not quite flat. It's not a 90 right here. It's kind of like a, I don't know, like a 75 or something right there. And I had to go around all this crap in order to put uh, four subs. I had to put my four subs across the back of the car like this. And... Uh, Oh my gosh, it was it was an absolute mess. And the problem was is that by the time you take away all this space, you're not left with a very big box. So my box, I'll see if I can do this. My box is kind of shaped like this, I would say. That's probably the nutshell of how my box is built. Well, the box has a, a little kick out in it for the transmission hump this big transmission hump. So by the time you put a speaker in there, you can't put speakers, you can't put them in a box. There's just no room. So that's why I had to invert them inside the, the box. Okay, well that's fine and dandy, but now all of a sudden I have maybe eight cubic foot. I'm thinking probably, I, I, there's no way I can figure up all this angle on how this is gonna go. So I'm thinking I have maybe eight cubic foot. And then right over here, I have a port behind the passenger seat. And this port cannot be very big because the box itself right here is not very deep. So the port kind of sticks out of the box. Well, that port is not big enough. So now I have an undersized box with an undersized port. So what does that give us? That gives us basically a box that's tuned up into the upper stratosphere. <laughs> uh, and you can tell too, you know, when that car plays, you know, it's kind of, a, I would almost say it's almost a burp box. You get that, uh, those 50 hertz around, you know, 45, 50 hertz. It gets pretty, you know, you get that kind of, you sit and you, ooh, you get that little twinge. But it, when it starts getting down into like, you know, 30s and uh, like, yeah, when it gets down in the 30 hertz range, it starts to slowly die off, and then you just see the, the speakers just mechanically pumping their ass off, but not a whole lot happening. So, I've always been, you know, the reason I did this is because I, I want it loud. I wanted it to be loud. So, I didn't have the room for anything else other than just, I was thinking, you know, at the time, I was thinking, I'll do a, a, a small you know, I'll do like two twelves, and then of course I was like, nah, I don't want to do two. I want, I want bass. I'm always the guy that does overkill. 
you know, my idea of overkill is not enough. You just got to keep going. So what I wanted to do was I thought about maybe I'll take two of them out. And then I thought, you know what? No, I think I'll just seal up the box. I think I'll just take this box, I'll seal up the port, and I'll just make this a sealed box. Now that would give me roughly eight cubic foot for those speakers, which still on the sealed size is, is still a little bit small. But I think I've, I've always been kind of a sealed box guy anyway. I always kind of like the, the sound of a sealed box. So I think when summer comes, I'll block that port off. I'll do a little bit of experimenting. I'll block that port off. And because uh, I got some comments, uh, uh, like I posted my video on the American Base Forum. People's like, that should, be, that should be destroying your car with, because I got two Sundown SIA 3500s on there. And people are like, that should be destroying your car. And I'm like, well, no, not really. Because, well, first of all, um, the box is way too small. Port's way too small. But, you know, it's, I understand. Um, you know, I understand. Trust me, I understand. I understand. Yeah, you know, I'm not using those speakers to their full potential. I'm not, I'm not using my system to its full potential. Um, I bought a JS390. Uh, it's got a... Uh, X2 AGM under the hood, which has been a great battery. If anybody gets one of those, um, you won't be disappointed. Uh, it's got an Ioxus uh, capacitor banks or Loxus or Ioxus, however you say it, capacitor bank behind the seat. Uh, it uses Jim's machine works, uh, fuse holders and stuff like that. And I'll talk about that in another day. Um, but... I think I'm just going to seal that box off. I think I'm just going to take that, make, make it a sealed box and see what happens. Now, I can only imagine probably when I seal this box off, it's going to start destroying the box. Um, I get a little bit of baffle flex now. And the top is double baffled. I get a little bit of baffle flex now. I can imagine when I seal that box off what it's going to do. So it might end up ripping itself apart, and then I just have to totally rebuild the whole box. And I'm not, you know, I'm not against that. Um, it took me several months to get that box put together because of how complicated it was and it's literally bolted down in the car there is four three eighths bolts that i drilled through the car through that metal and bolted that sucker down in the car so it's not coming out of there very easily i have to crawl up underneath the car and unbolt it i'm one person and if anybody's ever done like you know a bolt on one side and a nut on the other side and just trying to have somebody reach inside your speaker box while they're trying to hold on to the nut and bolt yeah it's, it's always fun so but uh, I just want to shoot, shoot a quick vid this morning, uh, let you guys know what's going on, why I want to change the box in the car. Um, I'll probably, this summer, I'll probably work on doing a lot of stuff to make the car a little bit more uh, reliable so I can travel with the car a little bit more. I don't know if I'll do as much to what I want to do to the stereo system. I might just block the port off, see how it sounds, and go from there. Because I didn't really get to enjoy it last year. It's kind of hard, uh, especially where I'm at. I kind of got to drive out in the country, listen to it, come back home, drive back out to the country, listen to it, because, oh my God, nobody right here likes bass but me. So, <sighs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little update. I, I basically put a stereo in the worst car, <laughs> the worst possible vehicle you could put it in. I think I would have been better off buying another car and just doing a, building a demo car, which... I'm not against that because eventually um, I think I'm going to end up doing that. I'm going to end up buying me something and making me a demo vehicle. Uh, I enjoy it enough now to where I want to get something um, that I can travel around with and go to shows. And uh, that car, while I can't drive it everywhere, it's not like I could just jump in it and drive my demo vehicle. That's something else I want to talk to you guys about. You know, for you guys that... Uh, now, back in it, uh, that drive your demo vehicles around, you know, there's a, there's a big difference between, you know, having your, <coughs> sorry guys, it is cold out here, and this first thing in the morning, I have not woke up, uh, driving your demo vehicles around and trailering your demo vehicles around, that's probably something I want to talk about too in another video. Um... Still waiting for carpet for this. Today, I got the truck running outside. It had a flat tire, so I'm pumping that up right now. 
I'm trying to get the garage halfway warm. That's why you hear the heater keep kicking on. I think I'm going to try to start on something different today. I don't know. It just depends. Uh, it's kind of a mess. I don't really want to clean it because I'm just going to make it a mess again. So I might go get me some more wood, start another project, and uh, wait for carpet, for the carpet to come in for this, and I'll carpet that box. Yeah, so I got a couple ideas. Uh, this sawdust is killing me, and I need my caffeine. You guys have a good day.